Hello and welcome back to the Batty Corvette Repair Channel. My name is Brian Thompson. Today we're continuing our troubleshooting series. We're going to check out this 84 instrument panel. He says this is from an 84 Corvette. I can't see any information on the panel. I've checked the dimmer and the fuses and they're good. Okay, so we got some information from the customer. We see what problem he's having. And being from Puerto Rico, it's not a surprise. He lives in a very sunny climate and the polarizing film is faded. We can see that because uh, we can see color through the instrument panel even when it's off. So we've got key off in this condition. Uh, we see the colors here, here, and here. This is absolutely a set of faded polarizing film. While we've got it plugged in, we're going to go ahead and we've got our speed signal applied. We're going to go ahead and check our odometer. It's turning at the rate it should for 36 miles an hour. Okay, I want to show you one more thing before we tear this apart. Uh, we'll notice that we're operating here in normal room lighting conditions, and yet the instrument panel bulbs are, are very, very dim to the point that I can't even see the text on some of these LCD panels. And the reason for that is that our photo cell has faded. The photo cell is not causing the cluster to be as bright as it should. Now, the reason that we can identify this as a photo cell before we've ever checked it is that when we turn it on, we see the bulbs go full brightness. And about two seconds later, after the lamp test ends and it's the cluster starts responding to the brightness of the photo cell, they're too dim. So we know that they're acting on the they're acting on behalf of the photo cell. And we see it dimming and dimming and dimming, coming back slightly, and uh, that it's not working the way that it should. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some polarizing film. I'm going to rotate this until I see a speed signal and a tack signal, information on the center panels, and we're just going to check that at the time the key comes on to make sure that all of the segments on that panel are lighting up the way they should. And these are. One last thing that I want to show you. The key is off. We see not a faded halo around the center, but rather um, light areas around the edge. And the light areas around the edge are occurring at places where the panel is painted black. The reason that we're seeing this light area here is that the paint has peeled away from the back side of this panel. Right now the panel is restorable. It will never look factory We'll always see this, this light ring around it, but at least the information on it will be readable if we replace the polarizing film. If we want to return this to a factory look, we're going to have to replace the LCD panel. There is not a fix for large areas of paint peeling away from the back side of the instrument panel. All right, let's get this apart and see what's inside. All right, uh, I removed the odometer and had a look at uh, the front because I saw some bailing wire around it. Um, it is fairly common for these metal bearing plates to separate from the plastic housing. It's easy to glue them back into place. Uh, that is not what's happened here. Somebody has simply twisted some wire around this one. And so we will uh, we'll make a repair to the odometer motor uh, to get rid of this bailing wire. I don't trust that to be a long-term solution. Next, we're going to look for discoloration of this 12-pin connector. I actually don't see anything that indicates that uh, heat might be generated in this particular instance, but it does look like the factory connector, and if it is, then um, it's 37 years old, and we need to do something about it. Let's take a look. Next, we're going to uh, push on that 12-pin connector to see if we have any broken solder joints. I don't see any intermittent operation from pressing on either the power supply or that 12-pin connector. If we bump it a little bit, it doesn't seem to be intermittent, so we might not have connectivity issues. Let's go ahead and get it apart and check everything out. What we see here is that uh, we see some uh, flux residue on the back side of this connector set, which means it has been replaced. They replaced it with a factory part, so that's the reason that we're not seeing heating at this point. We also see that it has a replacement power supply. I don't see any problem with those solder joints. I don't see any problems on any of the rest of the uh, circuitry on the back side of this board. So let's go ahead and set that aside. 
Again, we see uh, pins that are nice and bright and shiny, so I don't see a problem with that. If this has been replaced as well, uh, we're in good shape. I see that the photo cell has been replaced at some point in the past. The photo cell isn't working the way it should. So something's wrong there. We need to address that situation. I think the photo cell is still faded. That's the reason the bulbs are running dim on this cluster. Let's go ahead and take the bottom board out. We look at the back side of the LCD driver board and indeed we see that there's some flux residue on here. Somebody could have done a little better job of cleaning this up, but uh, it does have a replaced connector set. I see no bad solder joints. So we're gonna leave that alone. The photo cell should have a sine wave pattern etched into some, uh, some metal film on the front of it. Uh, what we see is that something has absolutely dissolved this photo cell. Uh, it is beyond faded and that's the reason that our bulbs are running dim. So we do need to replace the photo cell. Other things that we see on the back side of this board are that it's still running the factory bulbs and the factory bulbs are generating enough heat to completely discolor the circuit board all the way around those bulbs. Right now the board is not delaminating, it's in good shape. So while we do need to replace those bulbs, we don't need to replace the circuit board. Let's go ahead and set that aside and see what condition the LCD panels are in. Here we see the back side of this speedometer panel. You can see that the film on the back side of this panel, as well as the uh, graphics, have lifted away from the panel. At this point, the panel isn't completely de delaminated, but it's on its way. I'm going to recommend to the customer that we uh, replace the panel. If, um, if that's not in the budget, then we can still replace the polarizing film on this panel and make it readable again. Again, if we look in those, those areas where that film has lifted, where the, the factory paint is, we see a light, we see a lighter gray or a white kind of cloudy halo in those areas. And that in, again, that indicates that the polarizing film and factory graphics are starting to delaminate away from the panel. Other things that we can notice about this panel, and we saw this when the cluster was together, when the power is not on, we're able to see color in the area of the bar graph and the digits. That means the polarizing film is faded and needs to be replaced. We see the same thing for the center panel. When the power is off, we see color in the area of the digits and the bar graphs, and that indicates the, po the polarizing film is faded and needs to be replaced. In this case, I don't see any lifting of the, uh, the paint or the graphics on the back side of this panel. It's in pretty good shape. Finally, we have the tack panel. When the power is off, we see that uh, we can see color in the bar graph segments and the digits of the panel. That indicates that this polarizing film is faded and needs to be replaced. When I looked at the back side of this panel, uh, I do not see any lifting of the factory graphics. In fact, it looks in good condition, so it is a good candidate to be restored. Finally, I want to check the color filter. Uh, what I'm looking for is uh, to see if any paint has been transferred from the LCD panels to the filter, and we do see some spotting. Uh, but those are in areas that are not visible uh, through the panel, so I think we're okay. The areas of the digits, the areas of the bar graphs are in pretty good shape. So this is definitely a usable color filter. That wraps up the troubleshooting of this 1984 Corvette instrument panel. I want to thank you for watching. To find more how-to videos like this, as well as parts to fix your cluster, you can go to batty.com. That's B-A-T-E-E dot com. B-A-T-E-E dot com. Thank you. My name is Brian Thompson, and I founded the website Batty.com, where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.